Greetings. My name is Ray Kelleher, and I'm an assistant professor of neurology at Harvard Medical School and Massachusetts General Hospital. I'm here at the Cell Press offices today with Peter Lee, an editor at Immunity, and Peter will be answering some questions about what happens with the editorial process after a decision is made on a paper. So, Peter, first of all, what is the range of decisions that can be made on a paper? Yeah, so um, in the decision letter to the authors, the editor tries to be as clear as possible about the overall assessment of the work and will also convey to the authors the possible causes of action. Now, fundamentally, there are four different types of editorial decisions. At one end of the spectrum, a manuscript can be accepted after the review process. And on the other end of the spectrum, if the editor thinks that the work does not meet the high standard of the journal, the editor will be clear in asking the authors to consider elsewhere for the publication of the work. Now in between, the editor may determine that the work is potentially publishable pending minor or major revision, and in which case the editor will invite the authors to submit a revised manuscript that carefully addresses all the concerns of the reviewers and the editors. Now it is also possible that <coughs> a manuscript uh, falls below the threshold for publication at this stage because of substan substantial amount of work that needs to be done. Now in this case, the editor will inform the author that we will not consider the manuscript further at this stage, but will also let the authors know that in the event that the author can address all those concerns adequately, it is possible that we will reconsider the manuscript again. This is dependent upon the fact that the work or the novelty of the work is not compromised by other publications in the meantime. Okay. Now, how does an editor come to a decision on a paper? Yeah, so the um, editor always reads the comments of the reviewers very carefully to assess the perspective of the reviewers on the general level of interest, the conceptual events, and also the technical competency of the manuscript. Now, um, the, in doing so, the editor also tries to digest the, all the comments of all the reviewers to assess the consistency of the advice that is being given. But the important thing to note here is that the decision of the editor is not based on the votes of the reviewers. The reviewers' comments are taken on board and together with um, the informed opinion of the editor as well as an assessment of the overall standard of the journal, the editor will make a final decision. Now, it is possible that in some cases the editor will enter into further discussions with uh, one or more of the reviewers to clarify one specific point. It is uh, often the case that the editor will involve other members of the editorial team to help reach the final decision. Are there any circumstances under which it's reasonable for authors to appeal the editor's decision? Yes, it's uh, possible to appeal an editorial decision, um, but the author should uh, bear in mind that in all cases, um, the editors would have considered the manuscript very carefully together with comments from the reviewers. Um, and in all these cases, the editor would also have discussed the work and the decision with other members of the editorial team. What this means is that the decision that is conveyed to the authors is one that is arrived after extensive consideration, which is also the reason why an appeal is often not productive. Having said that, if the author feels that the editor or the reviewer has missed an important point about the paper, it is possible to send the editor a rebuttal letter. And the important point to note here is that in this rebuttal letter, um, the author should offer a well-reasoned, scientifically-based uh, response to the reviewer's comments as well as the editorial's concerns, edit editor's concerns. Now, it is um, also helpful that the authors propose um, how the manuscript can be revised with um, possible additional experiments 
to help the editor see the potential of the revised manuscript. Then the editor will look at this and assess whether it's productive to consider this manuscript further. Great. Now if a paper is not accepted, is it possible to transfer it to another cell press journal? Yes, as a service to our authors, um, we are able to transfer a manuscript between two journals within cell press. Now the way to do this is to simply contact the editors of um, the two journals involved and we will be able to transfer the files as well as the reviewers comments um, from one journal to the next. Now there is an advantage of doing this um, because the um, second journal um, could use the comments from the first round of review to make a quick decision on the manuscript. But of course the um, ultimate decision is uh, largely um, up to the editor of the second journal. Um, for example, the editor might determine that it is necessary to introduce uh, new reviewers to assess the manuscript again. And finally, Peter, what would you say are the key take-home messages here for authors? Yes, yeah, so um, the, I would say the key take-home messages are that once a manuscript has gone through the review process, the editor tries to provide a clear message as to the possible causes of action, that the um, decision is made based on careful consideration of the reviewer's comments, but ultimately the decision is made based on the overall assessment by the editor. And that rebuttals uh, are possible, but they should be based on well-reasoned and scientifically based response. And finally, um, if a manuscript has been rejected at one cell press journal, it is possible to transfer it to another cell press journal simply by contacting the editors. Well, thank you very much, Peter. This is great advice for authors when considering options for revision and resubmission of an article.